with turning the tide for the coalition effort there. Kevin Cork at the White House, where the administration is juggling bruised feelings with Israel and softer rhetoric, rhetoric toward Iran. But we begin with Chief Washington Correspondent James Rosen here in the Bureau with a day of terrorist carnage in a country President Obama had hailed as a model of success for the administration's counterterrorism policy. James. Brett, good evening. You many diplomats tell Fox News they believe these claims of responsibility that have been issued for these horrific bombings by ISIS, even as the White House, at least for now, is reserving judgment. Survivors spoke of lakes of blood after two suicide bombers struck a Shiite-controlled mosque in Yemen's capital, Sana'a, and a second pair struck a second Shiite mosque across town in coordinated blasts targeting worshippers at Friday prayers. They used the chaos and the vacuum to enter the mosque in the middle of prayer and blow us up a second time. At least 137 people were killed, close to 400 injured, scores of children among the victims. A group identifying itself as the Yemeni branch of ISIS claimed credit online, and Yemeni officials took that seriously, chiefly because the terrorist group usually active in this theater, Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, or AQAP, formally denied responsibility for the attack, and typically takes pains, these officials said to prevent civilian casualties. There is not at this point a clear evidence of a operational link between these extremists in Yemen and uh, ISIL fighters in Iraq and Syria. Uh, a, sim a similar thing could be said about the uh, claims of uh, ISIL's role in the attack in Tunisia earlier this week. <laughs> Yemen has been racked by internal strife since the onset of the Arab Spring, but the fighting grew acute in recent months when Iranian-backed Shiite rebels the Houthis seized control of Sana'a and deposed President Abdo Rabo Mansour Hadi, whom Washington still insists is Yemen's legitimate leader. A civil war would be a, 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 a terrible um, uh, development uh, for Yemen, but that's why we believe it's essential for, uh, for all the parties and, and groups to avoid unilateral actions, to avoid violence. With AQAP reportedly seizing a southern provincial capital, however, and executing Hadi loyalists on the spot, civil war appears a very real prospect. And the problem in the country is that the rise of, uh, the rise of terrorism in concert with the government, which fell very quickly, um, is that you've now got this sort of perfect storm of nightmare conditions. Yeah, many officials told me today's bombings were the worst mass casualty attack in the country's modern history, and that the only foreign governments still maintaining a presence in Sana'a, Brett, are a handful of Arab allies, the Russians, the Chinese, and you guessed it, the Iranians. Okay, James, thank you. This morning, uh, around a little after 7, uh, 911 received a call from a uh, female motorist that was southbound on Interstate 45. Uh, she had, uh, was obviously getting on Interstate 45, at which time she had an altercation with an individual uh, in a white SUV. Uh, she blew uh, her horn at the individual, and uh, at that point the guy uh, that was driving the vehicle started taunting her, uh, basically what we had developed into a road rage situation. At some point, the uh, individual in the white SUV drove up to the right side of her vehicle, uh, at which time one uh, gunshot was fired, uh, striking our victim in the back of the head. Uh, the victim was coherent enough to, to be able to steer her vehicle off the uh, Interstate 45 freeway onto uh, Airtex, the uh, exit ramp, uh, she, where she stopped. She called 911. Uh, she was uh, incoherent because she was in and out of consciousness. Uh, it took us about 15 minutes to uh, find our victim. Uh, once we found the victim, uh, EMS uh, was summoned uh, and uh, she was uh, ground transported to Herman Hospital where she is now in uh, critical condition with uh, parts of the uh, bullet fragments in her brain. She was on her way to work. Uh, uh, now I will say her uh, husband did come to the scene. Uh, uh, he, he, she was coherent enough to give his information so he could be called. He did arrive. I believe they were actually just ground transporting her uh, uh, to the hospital as he was pulling up. So he is at Herman Hospital with This is CNN Breaking News. Welcome back to The Lead. We have some breaking national news right now out of Mississippi. Law enforcement officials tell CNN police ha there have found a body of an African-American man who had been missing since early this month. They found the body hanging from a tree. Let's get right to CNN Justice Correspondent Evan Perez. F Evan, the FBI is on the scene. 
What can you tell us about what officials are saying? Well, right now, Jake, they have two parallel investigations. Obviously, this uh, man was found hanging from a tree uh, on, in some woods in property behind the residence where he was living. And because of the circumstance, this is in southern Mississippi near the Louisiana border. Uh, the FBI was called in by local authorities. Uh, they found him this morning, about 10 o'clock this morning. They were looking for him because he'd been missing for, for, uh, since early this month. The FBI is in charge of, of checking to see if there's any federal uh, violation, uh, civil rights violation. Uh, you know, obviously the circumstances are, are very, uh, very uh, suspicious, you know, hanging from a tree and so on. Uh, they haven't ruled out that it's uh, possibly a suicide, uh, but it is suspicious and it is something that the FBI is looking into. At this point, all they know is that it is a suspicious death. They're looking into it both on the local authority side and on the FBI side. All right, Evan Perez, and we'll continue to update you with the news from that horrific story as it comes in. He walked down the TSA pre-line, uh, encountered the TSA officer who was checking the boarding passes with the scanning machine to be scanned. He was challenged at that point in time by the TSA officer. The response was he pulled a can of wasp spray and sprayed the officer in the face. He proceeded past that checkpoint and encountered the second TSA officer and a third TSA officer almost simultaneously. Uh, one was a female, one was a male. He sprayed the male in the face. He struck the female with a machete that he pulled out at that point in time and had a laceration across the upper right arm. The male TSA officer grabbed a piece of luggage in order to defend himself as it relates to the machete. He turned, he went through the magnetometer um, with the perpetrator chasing him. They got to the end of that line, if you know the checkpoints, there's some benches there. They both made to turn around the benches and were heading out of the exit. When going through the magnetometer, the TSA officer alerted the law enforcement officer who's manned at the exit. The law enforcement officer proceeded down the exit line to come around, coming uh, 